Hi everyone, today I want to show you a really fun talk about rock, paper, scissors, lizard, Spock, and other uses for the complete graph. This is actually a talk that I gave recently at Monash University as part of the fun lunch math seminar. And today I'm going to give this talk in several parts, so if you need the other parts of the talk, they'll be in the links provided. The first thing you should realize is that Rock, Paper, Scissors, Lizard, Spock is a generalization of our fam familiar game Rock, Paper, Scissors. And just in case you've never played Rock, Paper, Scissors, there are three choices that you can play when you're playing against another person. And you can either play Rock or Scissors or Paper. And if one person plays Rock and the other person plays Scissors, then Rock will crush Scissors and Rock wins. Similarly, Scissors cuts Paper and Paper covers Rock. So hopefully you've played this game before and you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't, then this is the hand symbol you need to make if you're going to play rock, scissors, or paper. Notice I've drawn it like rock, scissors, paper because that's really the order in which the things beat each other and it makes this nice directed cycle. Now in fact, if we look at this, we really see that we have three options and they're each connected via some sort of um, relationship or edge. And if you think about that, it really looks a lot like the complete graph. The complete graph in general can have n vertices. So here we have n equals 1 up to n equals 12. And then what you do is you add an edge between every possible pair of vertices. So in the case of k1, that's really boring. There are no other vertices for which to make an edge. k2 is just a line between two vertices. k3 is the triangle. And in fact, K3 is what we were looking at when we were playing rock, paper, scissors. So if you've ever played rock, paper, scissors before, you've actually played with a little, little complete graph. Now, if we're going to try to generalize rock, paper, scissors, we probably don't want to look at K1 or K2 because we want to think about things where we can play more things than rock, paper, scissors. So let's take a look at what we can do with those. Well, first of all, we need to remember that we were not just using a complete graph. We were also adding a direction to every edge. And the direction was telling us how something beat something else. So we had an edge between rock and scissors, but it was directed towards scissors, indicating that rock beats scissors. And in fact, there's a name for this. A tournament is a complete graph where a direction has been associated with each edge. So really, our rock, paper, scissors, and I'm just going to write that as RPS, is a tournament using the complete graph on three vertices. So let's draw it again. Now it looks a little bit more like a graph, but really this is just the game we were playing. So we can see it's a tournament on K3. And you might ask the question, well, why is this good to play? Okay, the reason why I think it's good to play is because every single option rock, scissors, and paper has exactly the same property that it beats one of the other options and it loses to another of the options. So if you look at something that it beats and something that it loses to, you always get a one in this case. So plus one and minus one if you want to think of plus one as beating and minus one as losing. And we say that this is in degree equal to out degree. So out degree is the number of edges going out of a vertex and in degree is the number of edges going into a vertex. And because we have these two numbers to equal, we call this a balanced game. And that's a nice fair game to play, but what if we wanted to generalize it a little bit more and add in another vertex? So then we're looking at K4. Well, let's try. We add in this other vertex. Hopefully you see that there will be a problem because right now in K4, this new vertex has to have an, a relationship or an edge to all three of the others. And then you're going to have to divide those three edges into in or out degrees and you won't be able to do it nice and evenly. So maybe you do this, maybe paper is going to beat your new thing and your new thing is going to beat scissors. But then on your third relationship, you'll have to choose a direction and now you're going to find out that all of your degrees don't work out to be balanced. And in general, you won't be able to make it balanced because of the property I mentioned. You have three other vertices and you can't divide three up evenly into two options, into two sets. Okay, well, uh, in fact, this is actually sometimes played with a well. Um, what do I mean by that? Well, I've heard that in Germany, sometimes this game is actually played rock, paper, scissors, well. 
where you literally think of a well as um, a thing in the ground that has water and paper beats well by covering it, whereas the other two sink in the well. Now, I don't really want to worry about this game too much because it's not balanced. I want to try to generalize our original rock, paper, scissors in a way that we have this really nice property of balanced degrees. So what that means is when I'm looking through my complete graphs, I don't really want to be using these complete graphs with an even number of vertices because of exactly the property we discussed. If we look at K6, for example, and we just focus on one particular vertex in K6, we see that there are five other things that it needs to be touching or adjacent to. And we cannot divide five by two evenly. So that's why we're going to just ignore all of these complete graphs with an even number of vertices for the time being, because we're trying to make nice generalizations of rock, paper, scissors. So now you're thinking, excellent, I see K3, which was easy. K5 must be one we want to look at next. And in fact, if you use K5 and you add direction, it doesn't necessarily guarantee you're going to end up with a balanced game. You can, but it doesn't guarantee it. For example, you might start with rock, scissors, paper like we've seen before, but you might add fire and water. Now, if you add fire, fire beats all three of the original play, um, plays, and water loses to those, but water will beat fire. And I'm not sure about the source of this information, but I have heard that there are some official rules which says that fire can be played only once in a player's lifetime. Now, I'm not sure how that's actually invigilated. I'm not sure... I really am not sure about the source of this information, so that's a bit of a question mark, but it sounds pretty fun to me. In fact, just the simple fact that there are tournaments of rock, paper, scissors sounds pretty impressive to me. I didn't know that that was a thing, so it is. And this is an example of n being odd. Here we have n5, but we don't have a balanced game. So how could we make our game nice and balanced? Well, I'll show you one. Here we have rock, paper, scissors, lizard, Spock. And in fact, I've drawn these things around the outside going scissors, paper, rock, lizard, Spock for the same reason why I drew the rock, scissors, paper in that order, because that's sort of the order in which you can see them beating each other. Now, maybe you haven't played this game before. I know I hadn't until I watched it on Big Bang Theory and our beloved character Sheldon explained the rules to us. So if you're unfamiliar... First of all, I want you to notice that the in degree equals the out degree equals 2, which is exactly what we're aiming for. n minus 1 other things divided by 2, that's what we get for our in degree and our out degree. Now, if we wonder how to play, well, we already know how to play scissors and paper and rock. How do you play lizard? Well, apparently this is the hand symbol, and it does look like a lizard's head. And you probably have guessed the symbol for Spock. If you've guessed this, you're right. And yes, this does refer to the Vulcan Spock, or if you're a little bit of a younger generation, then this is definitely the Vulcan you're thinking of. And how does it work? How do you play? Well, these are the relationships. Now, if you watch Sheldon explain the relationships, he actually follows this nice cycle. He says that scissors cuts paper, and then paper covers rock, rock crushes lizard, lizard poisons Spock, Spock smashes scissors, and then he works inside. He goes, scissors, decapitates lizard, lizard eats paper, paper disproves Spock, Spock vaporizes rock, and rock crushes scissors. Mm. Now, probably you have played rock, paper, scissors before, but there's a good chance you've never played rock, paper, scissors, lizard, Spock before. So it would be great if you have the opportunity to play this game with a friend, or if you don't have any friends on hand at the moment, we do have another option. In fact, my husband built a, us a little web app, and it looks something like this. You can find it at CodePen if you want to see the code as well. But this is so that you can play Rock, Paper, Scissors, Lizard, Spock without needing a friend on hand. So it works really easily. You see all the different symbols that you would have to use with your hand, and you are asked if you choose Rock, Paper, Scissors, Lizard, or Spock. Now, maybe since it's our first time playing, we usually tend to play Spock. Believe me, I've noticed this trend. But the computer chose Rock, so we win. That was excellent. Um, let's play Lizard. Well, the computer chose Spock, and we won again. Let's play Paper. 
Uh, unfortunately, we lose this time because the computer chose scissors. Now, this is lots of fun. And in fact, the computer is playing at a one-fifth probability here. So it's lots of fun to see how you can beat the computer or lose to the computer. Sometimes you can even tie. So if we play enough um, choices, then... Oh, look at that. Computer also chose lizard and the result was a tie. So I hope you've had fun with part one of the Rock, Paper, Scissors, Lizard, Spock talk. And in part two, we're going to look at even bigger generalizations of this kind of game. See you there.